Okay, I guess India. Let's quickly look into Nasdaq before I dive into that. Um, I just want to appreciate those who've been uh, sending me uh, screenshots of their trades and why they took trades, and most of them actually follow the set of rules that um I shared in the previous video. So if you haven't watched the previous videos and you haven't subscribed, you haven't liked, you haven't disliked. Just go ahead and watch the previous videos. You can leave a comment. Feel free to leave a comment, guys. Feel free to leave a comment. And yes, subscribe so that whenever I post a video, you will be able to get a notification as quick as possible. Right? So I, I appreciate the feedback from those who've been um, following up. So yesterday, we took a trade right here before this law was created. So we're looking at this area right there, this region here. So we took a trade here using the 50% uh, rule, okay, of this pin bar. The stop loss was outside. We're using this loop to place our stop loss just somewhere there, okay. And the price came down to trigger us, and then it stalled, attempted to go down lower, and then it did that uh, somewhere around during the, the Nasdaq open, okay. And that was that was it for us because we were looking at this particular guy. Okay. But I know there are people who probably bought when they saw this candle. And there was no reason for them buying. It's just that there's there's people who see a big candle and they say Nasdaq is going up, Nasdaq is going up, Nasdaq is selling. Guys, stay away from those things. Stay away from noise. There's no way that you're gonna make money if you are still uh, listening to people saying Nasdaq is going up without any reason. You need something, you need confirmation. Whether you're trading currencies or you're trading indices, it's the same thing. You need you need something to lean on, especially when you have money in there. I mean, some of us have responsibilities, right? That those who are much younger probably do not have financial responsibilities, right? So they can gamble and, and 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 there won't be any sort of consequences. But if you have a family, you have, uh, let's say you have kids and all that, you have probably have bills and, and, and all those things. You can't just be taking noise. You can't be listening to noise where people are saying sell, another person will say buy, and then another one will say I sold, another one, this is just noise. You need to, find a solid ground that you can actually stand on as as far as the technical analysis is concerned okay so it depends on what your goal is but if you are one of those people who love gambling or maybe you've seen i see you guys are sending me screenshots of people who stack up trades take 10 trades on us like, don't do those things take one trade make money okay check one trade make money close it's much better do not force wait for another opportunity because if you make money now and you are in a group where people are always say, telling you i'm buying i'm selling and all that this just noise okay obviously you will all forever be trading you'll make money in the morning let's say you make you make eight thousand rents somebody says we are selling and then you sell you lose that eight thousand rents you blow okay because you were just following things randomly without seeing what's happening on the chart that's just the reality of how it is. That's why I said to you, I do not sell signals, okay? I don't sell signals. Because signals, I feel like people are just there to, they're just sitting there waiting for you to say buy, sell. They don't wanna know why we're buying and selling. And to me, it feels like, it feels like a scam in a way, okay? So I rather know, I don't do signals. I don't do investments. I don't do all those, those those weird things that people do. They take your money and say, we're gonna trade on your behalf. I mean, think about it. If I say, invest invest 100,000, I'm gonna trade for you. Where is my 100,000 if I'm such a good trade? I should take my 100,000 fund then trade with it. Hmm? Just save myself from the trouble and the stress of having to think, if I blow this man, if this, this, because this is how our South Africans got scammed. Somebody told them, invest this much. You're going to get this much. Where was that person's money? Why didn't they use their money to trade? It's much better if I'm trading with my own 100,000. Hmm? I don't have to answer to anyone. Okay? 
So this is some of the things that you need to look into, guys. There are some of the basic stuff that I don't think people should be paying for quick classes because you're not going to learn this thing in, in, in two days, in a two days to this course just that's just the reality and if you're a mentor you're watching this yes i'm talking to you you can't just teach people trend lines and take money away you're not hating on anyone's work but it's very important to make sure that people are getting the right information because it, it it hurts when i receive messages people are saying i still cannot uh, analyze and have paid for an expensive course and all that it's it's painful you still cannot analyze after paying for so much. But at the same time, you need to check why you joined the course, right? Why you're joining this course or why you're joining that course? Why were you joining? Was it because of how they marketed their stuff or was it because you saw their work? Something that you could relate to, okay? So enough with the, the chit chat. What to do now uh, on NASDAQ? Um, you can see this is yesterday's move, which was a bearish move, nice bearish move. We managed to get a buy there based on that, as I've explained. And one of my students bought uh, th this morning, somewhere there, I think, around midnight, somewhere there before this thing uh, closed, right? Mainly because she was using uh, the 50% rule of this candle. Okay? Same thing that I shared with you guys and that but um this is just a quick buy it's not a long-term buy because if you look at the risk to reward ratio if you are here and you are risking your stop losses here look at how much your risk is okay so it's three times it's one is two three that's why i said do not enter your pin bars here this is for people who are what aggressive and the those who are subjected to the fear of missing out for more, they want to buy that. Okay. I shared that on the previous um, free session, the pin bars and all that, and the psychology behind it. But what's next? These are the areas that we're interested in, the, this previous daily lows. Okay. This, this I believe, it's from, from Monday. Right? This is from yesterday. So that's why the, the student bought the. I saw at least two people who bought, or three people who bought around this. Unfortunately, I didn't buy this one. But you can see how they are taking the same information that I'm sharing to, to actually capitalize on it. Right? Even if I do not say we're buying or we're doing this or whatever, I don't send analysis and all that. But because they are following a set of rules, they were still able to capitalize. This is what I want for everyone. I don't want to be. be I don't want people to say, Vindy uh, can analyze and give me credit. No, I want you guys to know exactly what I'm, not the opposite, okay? Because you're giving me credit, it's not gonna change anything, okay? So, and if I, I feel like now I'm this big uh, trader and all that, I'm just going to grow shoulders and start looking down on, on people. So that's why I, I make sure that, uh, the credit must go to my student. The, the credit, my, my students, you guys have to get the credit, not the other way around, not me. Do the right thing, do what I'm, I'm sharing, okay? Learn from what I'm sharing. Then I'm the one who's give, going to give you the credit based on what you, are, you guys send me, the screenshots and all that, the feedback that I, that's when I will give you credit. That's what makes me happy, not the other way around. Because you guys are here to listen to Vindi, but you can't just be giving Vindi, yeah, Vindi boss or Vindi, it's a top dog. What, what does that help you? How does that help you actually? Okay. But let's see if you can absorb something from Vindi so that Vindi can say, okay, boss, my students, they know you do something nice. I'm going to hype you up like it's, it's nobody's business. Because it makes me happy when you follow the rules and you're able to make money consistently out of this. That's what I want from everyone, okay? So we are looking for buys here, yeah? okay? Or much lower, watch the previous video, okay? Or much lower there. And uh, people, guys, the people, uh, the people who, I don't know what you, how you guys treat. It, it confuses me. Now that I'm saying we are looking to buy, there's someone who's 
thinking about selling here without any reason. These are the exact people who blow accounts every day in the early in the morning. I repeat, blowing is not part of trading. Losing is part of trading, not losing everything at once. If somebody tells you, ah, blowing, yeah, we are learning by blowing, you learn by blowing. Hmm? You want to learn a car by getting accidents. Oh, you're going to die, I'm trying. <laughs> you're going to die. Hmm? Do things properly. Safety first. Blowing is not part. Don't make blowing a habit. I won't change that statement. You can go ahead and tell people who told you that blowing is part of trading. Just do the right things from, from the, the beginning. Okay? Don't say, ah, you have to blow your accounts before you can make money. No. Do the right things. Right? Losing is part of trading, cannot avoid losses. And anyone who tells you that their win rate is 100%, it's a complete a, a, a scam. It's a complete scam. It's 100% when you take five trades. You open an account and you take five trades. It's 100, and they are all winners. But take 500 trades after three months. Are you going to get all blue or green? No. There's going to be losses there. So it depends on the number of trades that you take. And one other thing that I have to point out, stop this thing of selling Nasdaq. You sell, you sell again, you sell again. Hmm? Stop this thing. Take one trade. Wait, it's even much easier on you when you have one. If it's on a loss, it's much, imagine everything is red, negative. This is when you panic and you start adding more trades. Okay. But if it's one trade, it's much easier even for you to watch a movie or do other things while that trade is moving. But when you have 10 of them, you'll be watching the market as if you are watching Muvango, you're watching Generations. You'll be watching tick by tick, even going to one minute, moving around. So make sure, make sure that you take one, wait for it to move nicely. It's easy, easier to manage that one trade than having 10 trades. I don't know who, who taught you how to do that, but it's completely wrong. Why don't you just take with one one lot size that's a little bit bigger then instead of taking 10 trades? Hmm? Someone must explain down here in the in the in the comment box why people do those things. It's completely wrong. Because I'm not gonna come out there and say, ah, do do it. I. So if you're a mentor and you tell your students and you show your students those things, it's wrong. It's wrong. Okay. So we're looking to buy this guy much lower because we didn't catch this buy. I didn't catch this buy, buy, okay? So if I didn't catch this buy, I need to wait somewhere. I can choose any other lower time frame. I can choose 30 minutes. I can choose, guys, there's no specific time frame that is like a killer time frame because most of you will be like, I trade 15 minutes. That's that. Guys, there's no specific time frame. This is not a mechanical device or a programmed device. I get it, there are three laws of robotics when you're doing, uh, uh, you're dealing with robots. A robot cannot modify itself and it should do exactly what you have told it to do or programmed to do. That's not how the market works. The condition changes. So you cannot be on one fixed time frame and say, I trade NASDAQ on 15 minutes or on 30 minutes. Learn to move around trading. If you get confused by moving around, then, Clearly, something is wrong with the way you do things. Maybe you just have to learn one or two things, okay? But do not stick to one fixed time frame. You should be able to look at the market from different time frames, okay? So if you are looking at NAS, and this is a downtrend and that. So this is just the correction phase, as you can see, because we have this nice downtrend there. The trend line is probably taken out there. But we cannot buy where it is now. Okay. If you didn't buy here, you cannot buy where it is. You cannot buy high. One might be saying, but it's a richest and all that. Okay. I'm not comfortable buying there because I'm looking at the much lower dip. And one other thing, there is some sort of pattern there that I'm seeing. Okay. Looks like a channel of some sort. A flag, whatever. It doesn't matter what. You want to call these things as long as you can be able to apply this because there's a lot of people who are good in theory but they cannot be able to do these things right there's something like that again use the equation of a straight line there's just a lot of people who can do this in theory 
and the messages that I get, hi, Vindi, I'm, I'm good with technical analysis, but uh, I need a strategy. Uh, listen to yourself. You're good with what? Technical analysis. Isn't your strategy supposed to come from those analysis that you're doing? Hmm? Clearly something is wrong. So you're just assuming that you know something. Assumptions are very dangerous things in that. Okay, so this is what we're having the bearish sort of a pattern. So if price might hit there, then do something like that. But this is not our daily low, daily high, according to the system that I shared with you guys. Because I'm going to stick exactly to what I've shared. I'm not going to go out of scope so that you can relate and be able to see how to apply these things. Okay. I'm not going to go out of scope and add other things and say sell here based on the, and then I. No, I want you guys to be able to catch everything that I've shared before. Go ahead and watch the previous video. If you haven't subscribed, click on the subscribe. It's free. Subscription is free. Click there. You can like the video, dislike the video. You can comment down here in the description box. You can leave a comment there. Okay. I'd appreciate that. Okay. So this is what we have. I'm going to stick exactly to this daily lows, daily highs, okay? So if this is a bearish pattern of some sort, we could see this move to the downside later on, okay? Followed by those buys that we are waiting for, all right? Of course, now we are trading during uh, the COVID-19 shanties. Uh, yes, we also need to pay attention to that. That's why you cannot trade without the stop loss. You, who do you think you are? You know Corona, <laughs> you need the stop loss. Because anything can 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 actually happen during this time. Okay. So you need a stop loss. Right? I'm not gonna come out there and say don't put a stop loss. The, the broker, the market, whatever, it's gonna move in your direction and then, then hit your stop loss and move in your direction. What's the stop loss for? You put the stop loss so that it can be hit. You're not putting it so that it's just decorating. So I'm not gonna come out there and lie to people and misinform people. You need a stop loss and you need to calculate your risk exactly as to why you're doing it. Okay. So this is what you're having. Price might come down here. So I'm waiting for price to actually come here. If it doesn't, sure, there's no trade for me. There are other assets that I can actually trade. There's like forex currencies. Hmm? There's this guys here, there's currencies. Hmm? I don't have to stick to one thing. And this is why other people, most of you are blown because you're thinking Nasdaq is going to make me rich. But you're still not making money with the same Nasdaq because you end up forcing trades. You are focusing on one pair. You end up forcing trades even when there's nothing. Okay. And you're scared of currencies. Like currencies are inconsistent. It's just a myth that people are actually saying out there or rather projecting to the public. But if you cannot trade, you cannot trade. It's the same as saying, ah, I remember one guy when I was growing up, they, they gave this guy a, a, a pickup truck, a bike to drive. But that pickup truck was, was actually running on diesel. And then oh, this guy failed to drive that car. His reason was, I cannot drive a diesel car. Stupidest mistake ever. I only drive petrol, hey, diesel. Diesel is hard. That's what they said. I remember that thing. I won't forget. It's the same as that thing. I, I only know how to trade Nasdaq. I can't trade currencies. How? What's the difference? Nasdaq have 100 companies, right? With Apple having the biggest volume in there. Okay. So if we were to look at Apple and look at Nasdaq side by side, you're most likely to see the same thing. Eh? Let's look at that and then I'm going to shut the video. Can you see that? Huh? This is what you say. This one is gapy because it's, it doesn't open uh, for, for, for a very long time. This more shares your stocks and all that. It will open later in the afternoon. Okay. So uh, since we know that Apple is here, when NASDAQ opens, it's going to open with the, I mean, not the opposite. Since NASDAQ is here, when April opens, chances are it's gonna open with a gap to the upside, okay? Because this is the biggest trading volume. 
So it, whatever that these guys do also have an impact on that. If they were to do a software update and, uh, and that software update have a glitch of some sort, that glitch was going to actually affect their share price. And it was also going to drag NASDAQ as well. But of course, NASDAQ is only driven by the dollar strength. Also, there's just a lot of factors, a lot of dynamics into this, all right? But you need to understand this NASDAQ that you're making noise about. You need to understand more about NASDAQ because most of you are just trading NASDAQ because you saw someone, but you don't really understand what's going on in the market. Because you need to take it serious. You need to take this thing serious in order to, 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 to make money out of it. I don't want to make this video long. So just to do like uh, final words on this, waiting for a push to the downside so that we can buy. I'm not comfortable buying here. And we have a bearish pattern. If we can get this, can buy later, later, maybe later on, we might have a nice, bearish pattern like this around this zone somewhere there, okay after coming down here all right okay that's it should you have any questions uh, please feel free to uh, send me a whatsapp i think there's a link here whatsapp link here if you click on it it's gonna come straight to yes i don't sell signals i do not sell signals i have to say this i do not sell signals I'd rather show you how to do this than selling you signals. Because if I sell you signals, you're always going to come back for more every month. That's not what I want. I want you to learn and, and go and do your own thing. Some other people are coming from Nigeria. Some are coming from Nam Namibia. Yeah, go do your thing out there, you know? Do your thing out there. I don't want anyone to be slave and give me credit for nothing, right? So let's learn together. Um, yeah. Share the Telegram link with your friends. Or share the video with your friends if you think this is help, helpful. Uh, if you think this is crap, give it a dislike. Give it a dislike. Click the, the dislike button. Okay, otherwise, thank you for watching. Should you have any questions? Um,